Hey guys, what's up? It's Ella, and I'm back, finally. I haven't made a video in a really long time, but it's fine, because I'm making one right now. Anyway, so, um, I wanted to talk about the Mets in this video. Specifically two things. One, how their season ended, which was really fun to watch. It was the first time they were in the postseason, as I've been a fan. And, um, also how I think they can redeem themselves from that over the off season. Well, like, next season, but, like, preparing for that over the offseason. So, first of all, they lost the division to the Braves. And they got swept by the Cubs. And they just had to win one other game. And, honestly, like, they had a really long... They had a bunch of games against the Braves. And they were doing really well at first. And then, towards the end, they were, like, losing them. And, like, they lost Marte, they crumbled apart, they were being really unclutch. They called up Francisco Alvarez in the biggest series of, the of, of like, that he could possibly called up for besides, like, postseason. And he was under so much pressure, and it was his first experience that he was swinging so hard that he was, like, throwing his bat. And it was really, really, really fun to watch. And then... We lost, and it was like, okay, this is not great right now, but it could be worse, right? We're still in the postseason. This is more than we could say last year. We had 101 wins. We got this. And then we lost game one to the Padres, feeling pretty defeated. But then we won game two. We got this, right? This is our redemption. We can't lose the first round to the Padres after having 101 wins, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Um, so, yeah, we lost. That's super fun. And, I mean, the Padres are, like, a good team, so it's not like it's embarrassing that we lost. It's just not the best. But, anyways, we're going to pretend that didn't happen, and it's fine. See? The Astros didn't win the World Series. What 2022 season? Okay. So, that's done, okay? Now we're going to the 2023 season in, like, half a year. No, that's not how math works. In the spring. So, um, we need to have a better off season now. First of all, we need starting pitching because we're losing everyone. DeGrom, Bassett. Walker, Carrasco, they're just all going. I want Bassett back because he was definitely consistent most of the year until the end when it was important. And um he was very he was just very good and I'd like to have him back. And I obviously want DeGrom back. And it seems like they're gonna pursue him. So that's good. And um Mark Hanna said that DeGrom wants to come back, but then I, also I read somewhere that, um, there was, like, a rumor going around that he didn't want to come back, but I guess it's been refuted by Mark Hanna, so thank you for that. Um, I also would like to, um, get, like, Carlos Rodon, someone like Kershaw, Granke, or Verlander would be great, you know, anyone in that realm. Um, I would say trade for Otani, but the Angels did clarify that they're not trading him. Um, I also think we could use a catcher, but we'd probably have to trade for one, because there aren't many free agent catchers besides, like, Wilson Contreras, and I don't think he's amazing. So, I guess we could, like, trade for one, but I don't really know who's open to trade for. Um, we need a new DH. But, um, Trey Turner is someone the Mets have been tied with recently, and they've been, like, really, like, looking into him and pursuing him, apparently. I don't know where that's gonna go. But if they re-sign Nimmo, which is something that I want, because he's a really good leadoff hitter, he gets on base a lot, and his defense has gotten really, really good, even though he wasn't nominated for a Golden Glove, which is something that I might address in a future video. Depends if I make it or not. Um... So, if Trey Turner comes, he can play second base, 
McNeil can play left field, and Mark Hanna can DH. And then Nimmo will play center. So, that definitely works for me. I am so game for Trey Turner. Um, I like him. He seems like a good dude. He's an on-base machine. He's so elite. He's like the definition of like a number two hitter. He gets, oh my god, if we have Trey Turner, that's like a complete game changer. Like, honestly. Because we're not really losing any hitters besides Nimmo. So, um, yeah, I definitely think Trey Turner. Like, he steals bases. He hits a decent amount of home runs. He, like, um, he drives in runs. He's all-star. He's got d really good defense. He can play multiple positions. And then he's got insane batting average. So, like, yes, I'm on Team Trey Turner. <laughs> um, and um, also, if we're also just talking about DHs, also available is Nelson Cruz and J.D. Martinez. But I'd rather Trey Turner. So, yeah. And we also need some relievers. So we could look into people like um, Craig Kimbrell or um, Kenley Jansen. Because um, we're losing, like, um, Trevor May. We lost Edwin Diaz, but we got him back. We're losing Seth Lugo. We're losing Joely Rodriguez. Or, like, more relievers than that. But that's all I'm, like, mentioning right now. So, also, are we didn't... We seem like we didn't have enough relievers last year either. Like, 2022 offseason, we definitely needed to get more relievers. And that should have been a priority, but it wasn't. We could also use, like, a tiny bit more depth. I'm super glad that we're keeping Vogel back. But Tyler Naquin and Darren Ruff can leave and never come back. And, um... Also, we could, for depth, we could also call up someone like Dom Smith. Um, we can use, like, um, we can call up some of our, like, minor leaguers, like Beatty and Alvarez. Alvarez could be catcher. I think his D defense isn't there yet. So, I'm sorry. I'm, like, fidgeting. Um, so, um, he's, like, probably not ready to play catcher yet. But um, he could also DH occasionally or just get some major league practice. But honestly, I don't think they should be called up yet, especially Alvarez. I think they're not ready yet. And I think th Beatty might be ready. Beatty might be ready. And honestly, we could probably use him to – because Escobar, um, well, he was good last year. And he – especially towards the end, he came in really clutch. And he's, he's – especially at the end, a, a lot of our success can be attributed to him. But it took him a while to get there, and if we can't count on him all the time, I think we should count. We should call up Beatty. Um, also, another thing that I think is also pretty important to tackle is extensions. Pete Alonso, Jeff McNeil, lock him down. Pete Alonso, in my completely biased yet accurate opinion, um. He's the face of the franchise. He's a really good clubhouse player. He builds everyone up. He's a power hitter, which is something that we haven't had that much besides him. He can hit reliably 30 home runs on the low side. And then he can hit 53. But you can expect about 40, I'd say. Um, He can, he showed this year, he can hit for decent batting average. He usually hits for like, you know, average batting average, but this year he was a little above that. And Jeff McNeil, he's so clutch. He plops it wherever you want it. He, NL batting average leader, MLB batting average leader, sorry, batting title. That's the word. Um, there, Jeff McNeil can play multiple positions. He's got good defense. Pete Alonso's defense is improving too. So like those two, um need to be on the team until like 2030 that is an exaggeration maybe uh no i mean no no that's not an exaggeration maybe for mcneil actually because he's 30 pete alonzo needs to be on the team until 2030 and mcneil needs to be extended so yeah that's my video peace out